Dim way daddy did the way. Not so so fine. Not so so wonder. Not so so fine. Not so so fine. Not so so wonder. Not so so fine. Dim way daddy did the way. Not so so fine. Not so so wonder. Not so so fine. Dim way daddy did the way. Not so so fine. Not so so wonder. Not so so fine. I say not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. I say not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. Didn't wait I did the do it, not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. Didn't wait Jesus did do it, not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. It give me good health, it give me success, not so so fine. It give me good life, it give me blessings, not so so fine. Tim way that did it away, not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. Tim way that did it away, not so so fine, not so so wonder, not so so fine. It give me good trade, it give me plenty money, not so so fine. It teach me how to make to make profit and I teach others to wait that it did away. Not so so fine, eh? not so so wonder, not so so fine. Tin way baba did away. Not so so fine, eh? not so so wonder, not so so fine. I said, not so, so fine, not so, so wonder, not so, so fine. I said, not so, so fine, not so, so wonder, not so, so fine. Greetings, people. Greetings, lovely people. This is your favorite girl, Princess Clayton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. And it's your favorite program, a chapter a day. Okay? A.K.A. a card for short. Why do we do a chapter a day? We just desire to study the word of God undiluted. We need to study the word of God and gain and learn and become better so that we can do what God expects of us and live the beautiful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. That's the whole idea. Heaven in view. We want to spend eternity with God in heaven. But God doesn't expect us to just live anyhow or just be like poor people or like orphans here on earth no he wants us to actually be like children who are children of a king because he's a king he's a creator of all the universe and so of course he wants us to live like that thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much for always coming for always stopping by welcome to sound educate prince will thank you god bless you bless you bless you very very much and of course, we are reading a chapter. Our Bible party is taken from the book of um, 1 Samuel chapter 21. Oh my God. Why are we having 22 here? Uh, um, um, chapter today is 1 Samuel chapter 21. And he has 15 verses. 1 Samuel chapter 21. And he has 15 verses. So that's quite a short read. And... Of course, we normally pray, hand over the session to God, do the birthday party, and then the Bible party. So let's get this program running, 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 run, running, 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 running. Let's get the program running, people. So um, we have to pray and hand over the session to God. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for all the amazing things you've done in our lives we thank you for this day that you've met we rejoice and be glad in it we thank you for blessing us we thank you for opening doors for us that only you can doors that no man can open and shutting doors that no man can shut so father we pray oh god that you're going to speak to us again in a special way we've come to dine and sup at your table we know that you've prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies so we say thank you heavenly father take preeminence put now and forevermore for in jesus Mighty and blessed name we pray with hands given. And all the saints shall say a big, big amen. Amen, people. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, 
amen so let's get this going let's get this on with let's get the bible party going because it is time to go so we're doing bible party now it's time for the bible party it's time for the bible party bible party yeah bible party yeah time time for the bible party yeah bible party <laughs> i like singing people so yeah you, you guys should just bear with me i always get to sing like that even when i'm not supposed to be singing okay guys so let's go um let's do this there's somebody kind of distracting me i don't know what's going on so they need help somehow oh sorry about that sound there sorry about that sound um the person i'm getting a little bit distracted sorry people i'm so sorry about that i'm so so sorry i'm so so sorry oh okay Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, God help me. Let's get the birthday party started. Today is the 8th of June. Okay, so let's get the birthday party started. Mr. Prince Will, we actually did your birthday thing the last time. So you're here today we could still sing your birthday we could still sing your birthday song because of course it's still your birthday right yeah so we could still sing your birthday song oh my god sorry people like these people are just giving me i'll do everything after i'm done with a chapter a day they're sending me messages and telling me things that i Getting me a little bit distracted and edgy. God is in control. I hand it over to God. I don't care what's going to what's going on, but God is going to make it work perfectly. So let's just go. Um, today we have Mr. Ayuk Awita. Mr. Ayuk Awita, I got to know him when I was in, I think, Boya or so. And of course, he's a very amazing person. He loves God. I think he finally ended up in Bible school, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. I think he finally ended up in Bible school. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think he finally ended up in Bible school. And I'm glad that um, he actually went to Bible school because he really loved God. He was serving God in a very special way. And I somehow, I kind of thought God had a call upon his life. Um, he had a call upon his life to serve God like that. And he ended up doing that. So it's really a good thing. And then the next person is Mam Bunyi Eklat. Mam Bunyi Eklat, we actually went to secondary school together. And then we got separated. And then after a while, I think we met again. I'm not sure if it was in the university or it was after university. But then social media got us to connect again. And then our accident association group. So we got connected. Hi, woman of God. Mom Tifa Melvis is in the house. Can people say hello to the amazing woman of God? Amazing, 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 amazing woman of God. Amazing, 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 amazing woman of God. Okay, so Mom Bumunia Cloud was actually my classmate. We kind of, she's the person who laughs a lot. She's my size. Yeah, we're the smallest ones in school. Um, then people didn't really used to take advantage of people though but we're really smallish and even till today some people still kind of look at me that kind of way because i'm smallish not before size people abby not before size i have me some gray hands you know you know? <laughs> please i'm just kidding i beg you i beg you me i'm a girl of god i'm a small girl of god a girl who is being helped by god i am just a small girl of god that god is helping every single day every single moment god is just helping the small girl and helping her <laughs> okay 
and then the next person is um mr chris jeff and chair and jeff is actually one of like my i'll call him my little nephew basically because uncle jared is his dad and well uncle jared is my grandpa no uncle jared is my great grandpa because one of his sons is my grandpa that is a very weird relationship you all will not get it so just don't try to figure it out happy birthday to you jeff Hope that you grow in wisdom and start you getting favor for God and for man. This young man is actually very hard working. His dad groomed them up like that and brought them up like that. So, yes, he's good. He's really, really, really good. Okay, so let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, people. Um, Now, this is... Happy birthday, Mr. Ayoka Wita. Happy birthday, Mam Bunui Eklat. Happy birthday, Mr. Kreef... Mr. Chris Jeff and Chair, happy birthday to you. Okay, so let's pray for the birthday people and then we we'll get the Bible party writing. Okay, we we'll get the Bible party signed up. We we'll get the Bible party signed up. Okay, people, so let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Do I have this right? Do I? Oh, it's so hot, people. So, so hot. So, so hot. Am I okay? It's so hot, people. Okay, so let's pray for the birthday, people. Lord, we thank you for all these amazing people that were born today. We thank you for the beautiful stories that you're writing in their lives. We pray, O oh God, every page that you open up in their life, O oh God, let it be to the glory of your name. Take preeminence, but now and forevermore. You deserve all our praise, but now and forever. Father, we just bless you. We just magnify you. We give you all the praise, all the honor and adoration because you deserve it. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Oh Lord, I pray, oh God, that even as you open these beautiful pages on the lives of these people, you write awesome stories that will keep them singing, dancing, rejoicing to the glory of your name. Perfect all that concerns them. Give them a sounds wonder into an sick state, a state of continuous laughter and singing because you're going to cause their mouths to be filled with laughter and their tongues with singing, oh Lord, and rejoicing and uh gratitude oh lord father i pray oh god that you're going to open doors for them that no man can shut and shut every door that is not of you in their lives that is not open by you and father i pray that you're going to connect them divinely to people and things that will cause them to progress and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress cause their light to shine brighter and brighter unto the perfect day lord i also pray oh god that you're going to cause them to grow in wisdom and statue gaining favor before god and before man lord i pray that you're going to increase them on every side let whatever the lady your hands on press by oh god wherever the tread the feet upon give it to them as a possession in jesus name lord we seal every prayer request with the blood of jesus but i will pray you take them to the top and cause them to stay there permanently we know you're going to give them all the strategies that is necessary and needed to be able to get to the top and not only get there but stay there permanently because you're the master strategist so we trust all the techniques and all the information that you're going to be giving us to do this so, Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to continuously bless them in ways beyond their reasonable understanding, in ways that they can't even imagine or think. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. Blessed be your holy name in all the earth. There is none like you. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to open their eyes to know those that are supposed to be destiny helpers. They are supposed to be destiny helpers too. So when the time is right, they'll help these people. And you also strategically position their destiny helpers all around them. So whenever they cry out for help, help is going to be available for them. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to bless them in every single way. You're going to bless them from east, west, north, south, top, right, under, center, from, back. Lord, every single way. Lord, expand them, oh God. Give them opportunities that will cause them to stand out and not fit in. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you guide, lead, and protect them. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings meet blessings in their lives. Favor meet favor in their lives. As you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor. Thank you, Lord God. Let your outstretched arm be upon them 
and let them be a covering over them as a shield round about. Release the choices of your blessings and rebuke every devourer in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let them be an overflow so people who come in contact with them will literally rub off of the blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. And there will be a blessing in their generation and beyond. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've had an answer. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. So the prayers. Amen. 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 With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives. As we pray, we seal the prayers. Amen, 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 amen. With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Amen, people. Amen, amen, and uh, amen. So let's get this Bible party started. Are you ready? Ready or not, here I come. First Samuel chapter 21. <laughs> I'm sure Mom Tupa Mavis will sing it. Amen, 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 amen. She likes that part of the song. Yeah. I wish you could call and, and, and be live and then we'll sing together. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much, woman of God. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate your consistency, your support continuously. We don't take it for granted. We really, really, truly appreciate it from the depths of our heart. I made a good Lord. Bless ya. Bless ya. Okay, so let's go. First Samuel chapter 21. Then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid of the meeting of David, and said unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king had commanded me a business, and had said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business, whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, and what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, there is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in the manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there, but the shoe bread that was taken from before the Lord, and to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doeg, an Edomite, the chiefest of the headsmen that belonged to Saul. And David said unto Ahimelech, and is there not here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the effort. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, there is none like that. Give it to me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of God. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances? Saul had slain his thousands and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was so afraid of Ashes, the king of God. And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spear. 
And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom that sword... And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the effort. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that, give it me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul had slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was so afraid of Ashish the king of God, and he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Ashish unto his seven, Lo, ye see the man is mad, wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of madmen, that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? This is the word of the Lord. And all the saints shall say, thanks be to God. So let's just talk about this one. It's a short one. The lesson is also a short one, I believe. I would say so. Okay. So sometimes, the reasons why we fall prey for some stories that are not stories is because we don't do... We don't do background checks. We don't follow up. We're not checking. We're not doing anything. And so David comes to these people. I don't know how this used to happen in those days, but this was a lie he was telling. He was telling a lie. Saul never sent him, but he was acting like he came under the the leadership or the he came as an assign like as a messenger from Saul to do something, and then he was saying. Oh, he didn't have this. He didn't have that. So maybe they should give them this and that and that. And he's lying and he's about to take shoe bread. The Bible says it's not a communion. Shoe bread is communion. That's what I believe. That's what I know it to be. So, um, shoe bread is communion. And this was him. They said we should not take the communion unworthily. But this was him taking it unworthily because he just lied. <sighs> Well, it looks like there were a lot of things in those days that were not considered lies telling. That was, or maybe there was really an errand that they had sent him, but the time had passed, but he was still using that as an alternative. I don't know whatever that is, but lies telling is not good. It doesn't matter. Someone say, oh, there are white lies and blue lies. Lies is added to it. As long as lies is added to it, it is wrong. Oh no, I didn't do this one. I did just a little bit. I didn't do as big as the other person. See, quantity and quality for sin no day. Hmm? You is a liar and you is a murderer. Now the same hellfire will not go. <laughs> it's the same hellfire we're going to. You is lying. You is stealing. You is killing. It's the same hellfire you all are going to, my dear. So don't be sitting there and saying that, ah, this one is a murderer. Me, I'm just a liar. Oh, <laughs> It will shock you. It will really shock you. I seen. And the funny thing is, if that murderer actually repents and you don't, you'll go to hell. And you'll go to heaven or she'll go to heaven. So stop leaving your Christianity and calculating your Christianity based on other people. There are lots and lots of us who are looking at some people who are like, hmm, this is my friend, this one. More life better. Uh, me, I'm even serving God. At least I make mistakes, but I make some kind of tiny, tiny mistakes. This one, eh? You have I go hot. As in, who? Sin is sin. It's not about how small or how big it is. It is sin. If it's sin, the place for sinners is in hell. And you're not going to hell because you, you lied. You're not going to hell because you stole. You're going to hell because there was made available a way for you to stop doing these things. When you were born, you had the sin nature. So it's just normal for the sin nature to manifest in different things. The sin nature can manifest in lies telling, it can manifest in stealing, it can manifest in murder, it can manifest in fornication, and all the other things. Just name them as many as they can be. It can manifest in any of those ways. But now Jesus has come and made it possible for you to be cleansed 
and saved and set free from that bondage of sin, from that nature, so that you get back his nature. His nature in you is revitalized and reactivated to maxima. And you rejected it. Yeah. That's why you'll be going to hell if you end up in hell. Because people keep saying, oh, will God really create a creature and then leave them to go to that kind of place? You're making a choice, my darling. You're making a choice to go to that place. God is not leaving you to go there. So, he lied. Point blank, he lied. But for whatever reason, I'm sure these people trusted him, they trusted um, Saul, they trusted everything that David was doing. And what God had done in his life and everything. So they just trusted him. And that's where we in our generation, we also fail. Because we think, because this man of God started right, it means he's going to end right. David started so well. See what he did to Uriah and the wife. And we know the story. I don't even want to go there. We know the story. So you would think, would you now wake up and say that fornication is sin? Fornication is not sin because David, a man after God's heart. Fornication eh, is punishable. David had his due diligence of punishment. God gave him his due diligence of punishment for that particular act that he did. God did not call fornication another name or it was adultery. God did not call adultery another name because a man after his heart, David, committed it. No, adultery is adultery. Adultery is adultery. And as at that time, David cannot come and tell you that adultery is a good thing. You believe because the things that he had told you before he got to the point of committing adultery were true. That is where we all are failing. It's not every time somebody can get to a place and miss it. Somebody can get to a place as long as they are human beings. They can say some things out of excitement that are not biblical. Oh, yes. A, a man of God said some time ago, or it was a man of God, or it was a woman of God, I can't remember, but somebody, a servant of God said some time ago that he doesn't forgive sins, only God will forgive sins. Somebody who doesn't really understand what he said would take that thing literally. So you start holding grudges against people, and you're saying you're not the one to forgive and God. So why do they pray the prayer, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us? God wasn't talking to himself, he was talking to us. Forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And that's why when you just pick and choose what you want to see in the Bible, what you want to believe, because you want it to fill your whims and caprices that you want to carry on, then you begin to misquote the Bible. And then say the Bible is contradicting itself. The Bible doesn't contradict itself. I remember somebody telling me that why would, why would four different people write a particular scenario, a particular thing in... in um, like in four different ways. Did they not say the Bible is inspired by God? And I'm stunned. Like, is that even supposed to be a question? We sit 40 of us in the class. The teacher teaches all of us. And some people come out first and some people come out last in that same class. And then you're asking me that the Holy Spirit speaks to us. The Holy Spirit speaks in, speaking to us. One is a doctor. One is a fisherman. One is... What do you think? <laughs> What do you think? That we're going to write the same? It's not possible. It's not possible. Even when we sit in church, that's why they can preach the gospel today in church. A pastor alone preaches and he ministers to thousands of people. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has taken that message and ministered to the individual personally to what will meet their needs. Oh yeah. So, my dear, that he has been preaching well doesn't mean that if he says something today that is contrary to the word of God, you will take it because he has been preaching well. Lies. I tell you guys all the time. Eh? Quote me anywhere, anytime, any day. If princess comes and says one rubbish that does not tally with the word of God, trash it. If I say it one, two, three times, if you even have grace to be here till three times. If I say it one, two, three times and it's still, my dear trash it if i say one two times me now eh, i've given people by two times so oh. if you say some kind of thing two times i'm like no it cannot just be coincidence i deny me i didn't they i stopped listening to you why eve was listening to the devil oh i'm freezing oh my god but can you still hear me 
Eve was listening to the devil and she continued listening before she began to see. It was a continuous process. She was listening continuously. That is the same way. If you continuously listen to things that you know are not okay, you will begin to ponder over them and at some point you will start believing the nonsense. You will start believing nonsense to be sense. Because you've listened to it consistently for a while. It is the human frame. That's how we are formed. That's how we were created. That when something happens to us consistently for a while, for a time, it just almost becomes automatic. It's like reflex. It's part of you. Like I sit in this sitting position that is yoga-ish. And uh, it's because I started doing it. I was intentional about it. But now it's just like my reflex position to sit. Sometimes I actually have to... I have to like hold myself to not sit like that. Sometimes even when I'm sitting on a chair, in a normal chair, I feel like I should fold my legs like that and be in the yoga position. When I started 30 minutes, one hour, my thighs would hurt like crazy. And then later on, I started doing it two hours, three hours. Now I normally sit like that. So if I'm sitting here like this for four hours, I could sit with my legs in the yoga position for four hours. I remember when I used to post the pictures, people started telling me, princess, are you even normal? Like I tried to just fold my legs. It wasn't even working before talking of putting it in that position for how many hours. <laughs> oh my God. There are things that people do with ease and there's some things that some people don't do with ease. So yeah. You don't keep listening to those things and you expect that it's not going to change you. So this guy actually like, lie is lie, sin is sin, and it's going to be punishable anytime, any day. You're going to receive your reward for it. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to harvest. And so this man, um, Ahimelech, wanted to serve the king. He was scared. So he had to do whatever he had to do for them. And then um, David made sure he asked for the sword and everything. And of course, he probably saw that headsman. And so he knew that the headsman would definitely go and tell Saul well, where he is. And from the way David said the thing to Ahimelech, of course, Ahimelech was not going to go and tell Saul because she, he has already said they don't want the information to go viral the more you talk about something the more many more people will hear it than one person so if you don't want too many people to hear something don't say it too much don't talk about it too much you know like that so he would definitely not have gone to ask he would have probably had to go and inquire and say did you really send david for an, on an errand that is so secret that is so whatever he couldn't because david had already said it was a secret errand see <laughs> that is intriguing, right? Okay, so the next um, thing that we see here was that um, when he went now to ashes, he was also scared. Sometimes we get scared of people that are instead scared of us. Sometimes we get scared of people that get scared of us. A lot of us Christians were scared of the enemy, but the enemy is scared of you as a child of God, especially if you truly carry God. If you're truly saved and you truly carry the presence of God on the inside of you, the devil is scared of you, but rather you are scared of the devil. Remember how Gideon had to go and hear, but from other people, that God is with him and he's going to destroy the, the um, these people. Was it Ammonites or whoever that were coming against him? He had to go and hear, but from them, before he believed that God really has empowered him to do great and mighty works. Sometimes there are enemies that tell us who we truly are in Christ. That the ones who make us realize it. That the ones who make us see it. And if we don't know who we are in Christ, of course, people are going to take advantage of us. Or we're going to miss opportunities that would have been readily made available for us if we knew who we are in Christ. If we knew who we were in Christ. How we know who we are in Christ when we're not studying the word of God. It's from the word of God that you know who you are. It's from the word of God. So we need to study the word of God. And David just went on doing all these wrong things. That's the crazy thing about sin. When you start doing it, you just leave that little hole. It says, I want a handshake. After a handshake, it's going to be an embrace. After an embrace, it's going to be... And then it just keeps going and going and going and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You have to remove yourself. You have to release yourself. Oh yeah, you have to release yourself. 
if not you get into so so much trouble so so much trouble but we don't want to get into trouble do we i don't think we do we don't want to get in a trouble we don't so yeah this i think that's basically what happened so like i was saying when you start sinning you just notice that you just keep going and going and going on and on he got to a place that he was so scared he didn't believe in god protecting him and everything he was now scared of even people he shouldn't be scared of this is someone who just killed goliath goliath was like the strongest and the biggest and the scariest and the what word can we use but now he's seen just normal mere people and he's so scared that he keeps lying until he had to feign madness. People of God, when you start lying, your life just keeps going down and down and you just find yourself keep lying and lying and lying. It's a bad thing because it is bad. God doesn't like it. But what do we know? What do we know? May the good Lord truly help us. So, I don't know if you have anything to add, but anyways, until the, the king of Ash, until um, Ash said that, what? You think I need mad men in my company? I don't want to. You think a madman will enter my house? I don't want to. Yes, I know that sometimes we have to make sacrifices to get what we want to get, but oops. Sometimes we really need to just look onto God and trust God. Why? Was he has he started becoming scared now that God is not going to take care of him anymore? Maybe the trauma that he had gone through in Saul's hand and it's seemingly like God is not doing anything started making him doubt the potency of God. Let not these little, little drags and pulls and stops and fights here and there make you think God doesn't love you or makes you think that God is not with you. God is with you. He is preparing center stage for you. And when he will be done with you, you need to trust the process. When he will be done with you, even you will not recognize your life. Mm -hmm. For what is what? Even you will not recognize your life. So let's learn, oh, people, let's learn to trust God. Let's learn to believe in God. Let's learn to hold on to God. Okay? He'll guide and lead us. He'll see us through. We need to trust him. We really need to trust him. So that's basically it for today. Trust God with all your heart and he's going to come true for you. Please don't lie. Lie selling is not good. And one lie begets another, and begets another, and begets another. When you do, they say, they, they have this adage that says, the first years is not easy, but the second years is very easy. Because it feels like, oh, when you've already said the first years, was it so much that you're protecting anymore that you won't just say the next years? They say that mostly, most especially for sex and people. Like, when you're holding your virginity with all high esteem and everything. And then when you finally, finally, maybe that guy or that lady deceives you. And then you give it. You lose your virginity. You're like, oh, what am I protecting now? Second time is going to be easier. Oh, yeah. If it's not God that helps you second, third, fourth time, it would practically just become normal. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, your conscience won't prick you anymore. At some point, this the Spirit of God does not strive for man. So he would just speak and speak. And if you listen, fine. If you don't listen, you're on your own. Ha, sin, ha, sin. Rich Alice and small lie. Them, they same place. Chai, everyone at the same. See, everyone is the same level. That's why I love God. I love God because he doesn't do pachao. He ne do pacha. Mm -mm. He ne do pacha. Where you be, that's where you be. And if it's because you rejected Christ, you rejected Christ. It's not because you're a thief. It's not because you're a mother. It's not because you're a fornicator. It's not because you're an adulterer. It's because you rejected the gift of Christ. That would have saved you from that nature. That's what is going to get you into trouble. So yeah, basically, that's what we have for today. If you have anything else that I forgot or I didn't put there that you think is very necessary for us to know, 
I pray that you're going to um, put it in the comment section so that everybody can get to learn and we all get blessed. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. We have an audio Bible on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and we're looking forward to putting it in on Instagram. Thank you all so very much from the bottom of our hearts for always being there, for always coming through, for always being a part of a chapter a day. We do not take it for granted. We do not take it lightly. Thank you so, so much. And God bless you. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that we're being grafted on the fleshy tables of our heart so that we're going to live thereby. And people are going to see your good works in our lives and glorify our Father who is in heaven because we are going to truly be living epistles, bread of men. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Abba Father, for everything you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do in our lives. The lives of every single person who is connected to this particular live broadcast today. Thank you, King of Glory, because we know you've heard and answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, people. Tomorrow is another day. Don't forget, tomorrow is another day. Let's come on here. It's 1 Samuel chapter 22. Let's study ahead of time. And we'll come on here tomorrow and have a special dialogue. Okay, people. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Happy Teacher's Day to all Thai teachers in advance. I don't know which other country has Teacher's Day as Teacher's Day tomorrow. But it's Teacher's Day tomorrow in Thailand. God bless all the teachers for the amazing work you're doing. I know teaching can be tough sometimes. It can be exhausting sometimes as much as it can be fun a lot of times. I really do appreciate all the teachers and everybody who is a part of this. Welcome, Mr. Cha Elvis. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We finally got through. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Thank you for everybody who is here. Please, you guys should not forget to share this out. A lot more people need to be blessed and transformed. Ciao.